Hi friends, this is Caitlin. Welcome back. I see Danny already checking in. Virginia, thank you ladies so much. Um, welcome back to Pink and Main's channel or Facebook page, wherever you are joining from. I am so glad that you found us. Um, we are going to have some fun making a perfect gift giving holiday card. Um, but when I thought this out the other day, I really think that this technique could be so easily applied to any occasion. So birthday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Christmas, Hanukkah, any other winter holiday, solstice, um, Halloween, right? My family gives Halloween presents because we're Halloween weirdos. Anytime you need to give a gift card to somebody, you could use this same technique and just swap out your images. Literally that easy. Um, so hopefully this is super helpful as we approach holiday season. Um, this was all inspired by this card that we made on Tuesday that fits a candy in here. I ate that candy. Um, so I don't have it here to show you, but a candy fits in there. And I was like, oh, well, you could probably put a gift card in there too. Um, and so I couldn't find the gift card. And then as soon as I logged off, of course, I found the gift card. So then I was like, well, how would I make that work? Um, and then this idea was born. So um, I see lots of people, Maria, Donna, Lori. I'm so glad. Oh, thanks, uh, Danny. It's just, you know, I was just rocking a messy bun today. Um, that's how my Thursday is going. Um, yeah. Deanne checking in. Uh, I'm so glad to see everybody on this lovely Thursday night. It was like the last warm night probably until next year for us here. So it was a good day. Let me get us. There we go, out of solo mode. All right, so I did prep some stuff today because this is gonna be a little bit more of a coloring heavy card um, than what we usually do. So I wanted to make sure we had time. So here are the supplies that I have gathered, right? We have these little cute peekers that we played with last month. They were the stamp of the month last month. They were absolutely adorable. They're still available. I have them with the dyes. And then this month, Pink and Main and Mommy Lay um, came out with the Holiday Peeker Placers, which you can, or sorry, places. You can use these just on their own, right? You can see these are absolutely adorable, just like holiday images, Christmassy images. They have little faces you can give them. Right, you could stamp the little eyes on the box, on the stocking. If you didn't want to cut out the center of this, you could put it in the middle of the wreath. Totally use on its own. Or you can take the little peekers and have them peeking out of the stocking or the wreath or above the present or whatever you want them to be doing. And when I realized that that's how these were meant to work, obviously we had to play with them. So. I have, from these guys, I have the cute little bear mouse thing. We're gonna say it's a bear for today. Um, and his little paws. I have the wreath, two of the ornaments, a candy cane and a present. So I have all of that already stamped out. I didn't die cut them, we'll do that once they're colored. And then our sentiment today, I grabbed the um, joy to the world. I'm thinking probably happy holidays across the top on the inside of the card. Okay, my paper, we're changing it up. I'm throwing it back to a previously released Christmas paper pad. This is the homespun pad. Um, it is also still available on the website. Um, I love all of these really fun, like knit print um, patterns that are in there, but I just really wanted to use um, something that was green and this looks really lime on my screen, but in person, it's still lime, but it's not like fluorescent. Um, so I think that will make a great background for the front of our card. And we're pulling in a little bit of another brand for help. We're, I grabbed my Catherine Pooler Minis Cranberry Fizz. 
um, for that interior sentiment stamp because that, I think the red and the green will just help make everything pop. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our panel on here. So I'm going in with liquid glue. This is the Easy Squeeze glue. My life is so much nicer, my crafting life, now that I have one with a clean nozzle, which was 100% my own fault. Also, guess what showed up today? Guess what showed itself? I found my anti-static brush. It was in a makeup drawer where it definitely does not belong. I told you guys as soon as I ordered that other one and it got here, it was going to find it. So now I have a backup. That's nice. Um, the other nice thing about this card is a huge feature is going to be the inside of our card. Our gift card is going to go on the inside of our card. And so I actually had to make a card base and turn this into a real whole card today. So I'm sure everyone will be completely shocked and surprised that, that we did that. We'll wait to add that once we have all of our little bits on there. Okay, we have our card base together. We have these guys that are good to go. Let's dive into this coloring. There we go. All right, so the only colors I have like fully committed to is that light green and that cranberry fizz. So we can have some fun with everything else. Let's start with the candy cane because that's going to be not groundbreaking. We're going to go in with some cool grays. I'm going to start with, nope, I'm going to start with C3. And I'm just going to pick a block to work on. And I'm going to I want this to look like shiny hard candy. So I'm going to leave a gap between my shadow line and that artist drawn line. So I'm just starting with a straight line and then going in with more of the side of my brush to flick that color out. On this arched area, we're gonna follow that arch. In theory, because our light source, the way I've drawn it, our light source is coming from the left. So my shadows are on the right. So there would be more light on this part of the candy cane. So I'm going to put my shadow heavier on that side. And then on this inner part, nope, that's going to be red. On this inner part, we'll just add some of that darker right on that inside. Okay, so then I'm going to jump from three to one and just work on blending that color out. Really using the side of my brush nib. So the, the longer you hold your pen to the paper and the more of it that you hold there, so using the side like that versus the tip is going to get more ink into your paper, which will help all of those colors to mix and blend. Then we're going to go in with this C0 and just blend that out into nothing. Run a tiny bit of that on that outer highlight edge. We'll leave that here in case we decide to make something else white later. We're going to go in with my dirty red markers that I've had over here sitting on the side to clean and still haven't cleaned because that's real life. And if anybody is going to understand, I'm sure it's you guys. So I'm going to go R89. We're going to follow the same exact idea. You definitely don't have to go this deep, but because I'm going to use that cranberry fizz, that is a very deep, more, more maroon red than like a bright red. 
but you use whatever you have or whatever works with your inks that you're going to use. This point marker. I'm going to jump to 39. Just again, pulling that color out. Just like that. And then 29 is going to be see, there's my Halloween weirdo family saying all of these should be black and red or orange and black. You can color yours however you want. That's the fun part. Last little section here. The squeaky marker. All right, so you can definitely see all of that dimension that we're getting from that highlight just gives that really pretty shine. Okay. Um, I don't know what I want to do on these. Maybe we'll do like red and green. Maybe we'll try to make like a matching fun green. Let me get out my, my Sandy Almond Copic chart. Hex chart. All right, so this is our color chart. This is our green. So I'd say in the like YGO3, 25, and maybe like 17 family. 17 might not be dark enough. Maybe 67. So we'll do YG67, we're going to jump all the way to YG25, and then YG07. When in doubt, that's how I pick my colors. Okay, and we're just going to do these striped too. We can just have a very stripey whole deal going on today. So I'm going to leave that reflective highlight line on these as well. But this time, instead of coming from just one direction, we're going to build up our shadow on either from coming from both sides. So the highlights in the middle. That's going to help to push this as like a round, rounded ornament, rounded object. Don't let those curved lines confuse you. That one got me a little bit. The whole thing is equally round all the way though. The wavy lines are just the pattern. The ornament itself would still be, you know, that rounded shape. So jumping now to that Y25. Pulling the color out towards the middle, making sure we get some good blending on all these edges. And then YGO3. Just like that. Bringing those same reds and just fill in that the in between. I'm just gonna let the little black dots just be part of whatever pattern is there. Okay. 
and not sweat them at all. Kind of using the green shadow lines to help me connect those dots to make sure that that shadow looks continuous over all of those patterns. And yes, it has not been easy for me to continue to push on making the occasional holiday card. I am still very much in like fall and Halloween card mode. But I know that a lot of you guys are working on holiday and gifting projects. I saw Angie had left a comment. She's who inspired us to make that candy treat card the other day on Tuesday. And she she saw that and said she's going to make them for, she lives in condos or apartments, and she's going to make them for all, the, all her neighbors. I thought that was so cute. I love that idea. So these this is two different stamp sets, um, Angie. Speaking of Angie. Um, we're using the cute peekers and then the holiday peeker places, which can be used separate or together. And we are getting those colored in. So I'm, while I have these greens out, I'm going to use these same greens to shade in my wreath. And I don't have like a great rule of thumb for this. I just want to kind of almost treat it like a braid or like really loose curls. So kind of adding in my own texture to kind of enhance the wavy lines that are already here. Honestly, guys, sometimes I just make this up as I go. I'm sure you're not surprised. Also, though, if you wanted the that little critter that we're using that I said we're going to say is a bear, if you wanted it to look like a mouse, how cute would it be if you did this with like cheese color? Because it has the holes. I think that I think that would be so cute. Maybe we'll do that one day next week. Just me over here trying to do anything but a normal Christmas card. No big deal. I also need everyone to know that I'm taking my kids tomorrow to go see the Taylor Swift concert movie. I'm very excited. We have our costumes already. We have about 40 friendship bracelets made. Hopefully it will be 50 by the time we leave tomorrow because they're home from school tomorrow for an in-service day. Um, so it's pretty much just going to be like the best Friday the 13th of my entire life. And if you don't love Taylor Swift, whatever you have in your life that you do love, I hope you can relate. Because <laughs> I know not everyone. I don't understand it, but I know that everyone doesn't love I just want to kind of stick with these colors. I really thought we were going to bring in a little more variation. I guess we'll bring in some like probably golds because I don't want to use my my grays, same cool grays for silver and have it kind of conflict with that white that we did. So I guess we'll bring in some kind of gold here in a minute. I still think these are like slightly non-traditional versions of these colors, which I think is fun. But if you really wanna like 
break the mold. You could use that new Mary and Bright paper, pattern paper, and some of the shades that are in there, because that one has like a lot of pinks and teals, yellow, and like a really, a, another really bright green. So you could use that to kind of dictate your color scheme. And that would be really cute, I think. These are looking a little flat, even though they're shaded. So I think we'll probably come in with some white gel pen to give them some shine. I was going to do the bow red, but now that just feels like too much red. So let's bring in some gold. Look like, like pan. Look like really yellow. How are you two supposed to work together? Your orange. That's not bad. Uh, we'll pull it so it doesn't go too orange. I'm going to go in with the YR27. And just with a really light hand, kind of add some shading to that ornament topper. And while I have it out, we'll just spin around and do the shading on the bow. So taking the artist's lead and adding some shadows on the center, coming from the center of the bow, coming around that little knot in this little gap where the ribbon is looped over, and then coming from the center down those streams of ribbon. Oh, Angie, I hear you, but some of the folklore songs uh, and Evermore songs from those, those two albums that came out during COVID definitely feel a little more on that countryside. But I do understand that. I do. I think it's I'm I think I'm easier to follow her wherever because I like such a wide range of music anyway. I listen to pretty much anything genre-wise. All right. So I went from wire 27 to wire 24. And then what's really going to help this read as gold and not orange is the Y26, which is this mustard color. And even though they don't really go in order, that's why I did kind of the little swatch test up here on my scrap paper. That blends out with that 24 really easily. So I like that. And that's just going to boost that yellow just a little bit versus orange. So now we have this is kind of looking very grinchy, but I still like it. I don't know if we need two ornaments. I just stamped them just in case. Um, we definitely need this present done though. So let's bring in an extra pop of gold. Because what's going to happen is the present, the um, ornament, and the candy cane are all going inside the card. So. Oh, uh, Danny, I hope you have a great night. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate you. So I'm going to go in and make this gold wrapping paper. We'll add a little bit of shading right under that bow, and just along these edges. And let me just fill that in with that 526 mustard shade. Okay. 
Let's bring in some red. It would be darkest right around the edges of that bow. That bow would be kind of 3D and popping up. Oh, this marker is rough. Just same thing, flicking that color out. And then fill it all in for 29. Just like that. Hmm. I'm going to go red top, even though I'm worried about this marker, to be honest, but just because my little bear um, is going to be either earth toned or like, I guess, like maybe polar bear white we could go. But either way, he's going to stand out a lot nicer against red and I was really hoping to have him popped up over the box. So if we do decide brown, brown against that gold is going to look weird. Speaks. All right, we're gonna try to get away with not doing that other one because I would just be coloring it the exact same and I don't wanna bore you guys. Um, I do kind of now that they only have white in one space, want to try to make him look polar berry. Um, yeah, this should be enough markers. Let's see. So the trick as always with making him look like a shaded white bear and not a gray bear is to make sure that we are still leaving white space on our image. So I'm going to be really light handed with my darkest shade. And I'm also not going to forget his little, his little feet. This one I'm going to be way more liberal with because that's the, our lightest is a zero, right? It's a C zero and that's basically nothing. So we can have way more of the C one. We don't have to be as reserved. I added a tiny bit right over that nose too. And then C3, I'm going to use to just pull all of that color towards the center. So we just have a really nice smooth transition. The body would, is going to end up being mostly behind the present. So it's okay to just fill that in. Doesn't really need to be white. Okay, and now he looks empty and plain. So let's bring in some pinks. We'll go R21 for in the ear. Give them a little blush, a little, a little inner tongue color, mouth color. And bring back that C0 just to blend out that blush just a little bit. Knock that back. And I'm going to grab 
C9 for this tiniest little dot of a baby nose. There he is. So enough color that when we put him against the white card stock on the inside of our card, he will definitely pop. But he still looks like a little white bear. And we're going to give him his little eye highlights. Okay, and I'm going to add some highlights to our ornament. If I can get my gel pen rolling. Like that. And then let's do a little bit on our king. When I'm trying to make something look like one solid shiny thing that happens to have a pattern like the candy cane or the ornament, I like to make sure that I'm going over those black lines um, versus if we wanted it to look like this was 3D texture, you would want to make sure that you break that highlight in between so that it reads as separate layers instead of like one smooth layer that just happens to be two different colors. So let's, let's see. I'm not going to throw away that blank ornament just in case, but let's see if that is enough to get us where I'm, I'm aiming for. All right, let's cut all of this out. Hey, Raquel, thanks for checking in. Um, let's see, put your head. That's one foot. Okay. Easy. And I love that the, um, the wreath has that center part connected right there. You don't even have to think about it. Please excuse the dog hair over my desk. I'm going to go in with some washi tape and stick it to my skirt first. I'm wearing a pumpkin orange skirt and a pumpkin spice t-shirt. So even though we're making Christmas stuff, uh, I am still in my Halloween attire and general mood. So if any of my family is still watching and are concerned about me. Hey Dawn, how are you? That guy needs a little bit of support right on the top. We got our candy cane. I almost said candy corn. That's what I get for talking about Halloween. Okay, and on. I forgot I didn't take him down. Take you down. And these through my die cut machine, which I have all kinds of stuff leaning on, of course. Setting myself up for convenience here. There's one. There's two. I am well, Dawn. I hope you're doing, I'm glad you're doing good too. It's been 
the week, but we're almost there. It's almost Friday. Lately, it feels like every week has been a week, to be honest. But that's okay. I think there's sometimes there's just seasons of life that go that way. Look how perfect that is. Love that. So this one's all done. This can go back. Ornament came out good. Oh, good. Everything came out good. Sometimes I try to like under tape, I think. Like I just don't use enough. And then something shifts. And I usually still use it anyway, but it's really nice when things turn out the way you expect them to. Okay. And you guys know if you've been here before, I store my dies and my stamps in the same package. I just cut off the like hanging tab and cut off the adhesive and flip them around so that I can keep everything all in one spot. All right, so here was my thought. On the front, we're gonna go super simple and put the wreath and our little, oh yeah, I am gonna put him on the front. So he didn't have to be, well, it'll still look cute on the front. He's not going to be popped up on the inside because he's going on the front. Okay. Silly me. All right, but I do want the wreath popped up with foam because I want to be able to tuck him inside. So I'm just going to cut maybe. I did start pricing out and figuring out some options for non-stick scissors this week, I promise. I did do that. All right. So take off our backing tape, backing paper. And make sure this is the right side up. Just like that. Okay, he's gonna get liquid glue. Ooh, that was more than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so used to that clogged one that now I can't gauge. So literally all I'm gonna do, because I don't want glue on my fingers either, is take a scrap piece of my, my paper that I die cut from, and I'm gonna use it like a tiny spatula to scrape that extra glue off. And that way my fingers aren't gluey. Um, and I don't have to worry about glue going in. So we're gonna just slide him so that he looks like he's in a good spot. We're going to add a little drop of glue there and there on the wreath and add his little hands. I want the shadow side down. There we go. Make sure they're up high enough that they look like he's popped over like that. Oh my gosh. And if you didn't want to do anything else, that's just a cute card. I'm not, you guys know, I can't, I'm not good at clean and simple, but that's pretty cute. That's a very cute card. Okay. So my idea for the inside, as inspired by what we were working on the other day, was to make a little 
a little pocket inside with all of these fun items that we can tuck our gift card down into. So we need to get this trimmed down first. Let's trim this to slightly shorter than four and a quarter because it has that score mark. Okay, and this time I'm gonna switch it up and I'm bringing in something that we haven't used here together, but I'm gonna use this red tape. And because it's super, super thin, there we go. I think it's like eighth inch. It's really thin. Yeah, it's eighth inch. Um, and I'm gonna use this to outline my card stock once I make sure that it really does fit. Yeah, it does. Um, and that way I don't have to worry about liquid glue. I don't have to worry about uh, my tape runner getting everywhere. This is just gonna give me so much more control. So I'm gonna place that right along the bottom edge. Okay, come on. And we're gonna put it up those sides. We're gonna leave the top open because we want it to be like a, a pocket. And I'm pretty sure I got this from like, um, Simon says stand for something. Scrapbook pal, Simon, one of those. Poor baby's up there coughing. I gotta get her some medicine when this is over. Allergies have been absolutely nuts lately. Okay. But this stuff, like once this is stuck down, it's not gonna move. Get out my little dollar store poker. Yeah, Dawn, I'm not positive. I really only ever order either from like my stamp companies directly or Simon Says Stamp or Scrapbook Pal. Those are the only like sources that I have. So I'm gonna guess it was from one of those because I don't know where, how else I possibly could have gotten it. Okay, so I'm gonna tuck this right up against that edge and give it a really good squish down. Okay, so we have that pocket and I have my gift card, not sponsored, not affiliated in any way, just, you know, the gift card I happen to have here. So you can see that fits perfectly in there. And I'm gonna, I want it to be up a little bit. And the nice thing is that this isn't really gonna like shake or shift around because we did, we just did that tape so close. It's so thin. Um, it's not like with the foam tape where it can really like dislodge, it's in there. So now we can go in with our liquid glue and Add all these elements. I'm not gonna push that down yet because I want them to overlap a little. And I like that like the candy cane is definitely gonna be up higher, which will also help to make sure that that stays in place. But with that in mind, I'm not gonna put glue up the whole candy cane. I want this a little bit at an angle. Um, and then maybe you just go more up and down. Just like that. And then the final step is going to be stamping our sentiment in here. So I'm going to put Happy Holly. I mean, you could go, oh, I do like that Merry Christmas, but it's like at such an angle. No, we have to, we'll just, we'll just trim it. We're just gonna go full Merry Christmas. 
if you wanted to put your personal note, obviously you still have this whole side, or you can do a smaller or thinner sentiment so you have room to write your message between the two. But for me, I would probably just fill out this whole side anyway. So that's good. And you could stamp this before you did all of this other stuff. But you know what? If you don't live life on the edge sometimes, what's the point? What's the point? You gotta get crazy once in a while. And for me, right now, this is about as crazy as it gets. So I'm gonna go in with my that Catherine Cooler Cranberry Fizz. That beautiful deep red. You guys know I love my pink and may inks, but we just don't have a full color rainbow to work with yet. Use whatever red you have that works. Get the dog hair out of here. And that is a super cute gift card card where you didn't need any special dies. I mean, I know some companies make those dies that like cut the little notches, but I just love this idea that like it's pretty flat. If we hadn't popped up the wreath, this would be a completely flat card that you could absolutely send regular in the mail. Like this part is not adding any bulk at all. So I love it. Hey, Kendra, thanks for checking in. It's okay, hopping in late. Um, so yeah, that is our cute little card. And like I said, changing this to a balloon, making these presents and cake and happy birthday. And now you have a birthday card to give somebody their gift card, right? Or whatever holiday you might need a card for, you're good to go. So I hope that that um, inspires you guys. As always, that's always my goal is to inspire you guys to play to think about new and different ways to use your stamps. Um, if you were like me and you didn't put two and two together, that the holiday peaker places were meant to be paired with the cute peakers. Now you know, now we know. I had no idea until today. Um, so yeah, there he is. He's so cute. I always think it looks so much different showing showing them to you guys like this way instead of under all those lights. So yeah, I hope you guys have a great night. If anybody has any ideas or requests for next week, as always, let me know, drop me a comment or a DM over the weekend. All of my accounts are listed in the description of wherever you're watching. All of Pink and Main's channels and ways to um, follow them are listed as well. And all of the supplies we use today, all of the supplies are always listed with direct links to the store for you guys if you decide you need to do some shopping. Um, so yeah, again, I hope you guys have a great weekend. I will see you back here at 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday night. And until then, guys, happy crafting.